All right, everyone, welcome. This is a very special podcast episode. It's actually pretty unique, and I'm, I'm going to say right now it is vulnerable, but I talk a lot about celebrating on this podcast, and so today I'm going to do some celebrating because a little over three years ago, I unleashed on the world something called Make Agents Want You with a little hope and a dream that it would uh, change the game for people around representation, and since then... Over 8,000 people have attended this free training and more than 724 actors have gotten agents and I'm just so delighted by it and I feel really vulnerable. So I decided to bring in a really good friend of mine. Sharon Friedman is here with us today. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Brian. So happy um, to be here with I'm you so and glad. Me too. And she's truly breaking character because she's going to host this episode today to talk a little bit about a, this I don't know, worldwide phenomenon, I guess, that Agent Goals is that is helping actors find representation. And first, I wanted to start off with that number because over 8,000 people having attended is pretty freaking cool. And so what we did is we did a little bit of the math on, so you can get like a picture of what 8,454 people looks like. That's as of the day we're recording this. So here's here's a little bit of the math we came up with. That would be if we filled Carnegie Hall three times over. Okay. Or, or. Um, I'm an actor doing math. It feels very exciting. Or the Broadway Gershwin Theater, you know, the one where Wicked is, that it's four and a half times. Which is insane. That's like the biggest theater on Broadway. Um, and then Sydney's Opera House in Australia, obviously, would be three times over. Okay, this one's crazy. Half of the Hollywood Bowl. Like, I've... That place is massive. Yeah. I feel like we've we've gone to concerts and got yes. lost and had to text, where are you? And half of that, yeah. Right. I think we saw, um, what did we see? Uh, we saw uh, Kinky Boots. Kinky, Kinky Boots. Boots and, yes. and Kylie Minogue. Oh, one of the best ones ever, the Kylie Bowls, Kylie yes. Minogue. Yeah. Um, and almost half of Madison Square Garden. That's and crazy. To me, that's wild. And part of why it's wild to me is like, so most of you may know this, but I used to be an actor, but acting – was, you know, pretty fun for me, but coaching always held this extra juice. And I was like, oh, coaching is the thing. And Sharon actually is the one who helped me figure that out. We met when I first I moved to, yes. And Sharon was like, yeah, it was, a- it was your, it was your fourth week in LA. My first week in LA, when we met, we were instant besties. Yep. And then I was doing a coaching program and then sh- I shared the information with you. And it was like, you were done. I was World- done. <laughs> Watch he out. Found yes. his calling. Yes. Um, and so the idea that uh, it would touch as many people, it still connects that like actor part of me. I would say it still connects to yeah. like being able to reach a number of people in a single sitting or performance or whatever. So, Oh, I was just going to say, I just also have seen how much joy and excitement it brings. It's like the ultimate one man show for you that you're doing this performance because you want to make such an impact and difference in the world. And it's really your realm of genius. I mean, seeing all the programs that you've done over the years, this is, this is the one because it's so important to people and you are so good at it. Oh, well, here it is. Here starts the vulnerable part of the podcast. Brian breaks character indeed. So I'm going to really pass the, the big mic to, to, to Sharon uh, to lead us through kind of a conversation around celebrating this and the history of it. And for those of you listening, obviously you could run over to makeagentswantyou.com to take this training, but I think this is also uh, going to have a lot for you when it comes to shifting your perspective around what it takes to put yourself out there. So whether you need representation or not, I think this conversation will kind of uh, hopefully uh, give you a bit of a game plan there and give you some insight into uh, how I've done that. And, and maybe that hopefully you'll glean something from that. So Sharon, take it away. And and how thousands and thousands of people have experienced this thing. Okay. So the, I mean, the first question is why, right? That's, I feel like that's such a Brian question is you got to find your why, what is your yeah. why? So, so what, why did you create this program? Like what specific experiences from your years as an actor, as a coach, or what observations motivated you to make, make agents want you and agent goals? So it's pretty easy. This is an easy answer. It's, it's long, but easy. So first of all, I had been coaching actors for a while. And you know, one of the number one questions actors would come with is I want new representation or I want representation. Either I'm with agents that I'm not sure are working for me and I should find a shift or I've never had reps that I love. Uh, or I'm, it's my first time going out and find representation. And I was having success find actors get representation from this own thing that I've made up in my head, right? This kind of like way mm-hmm. I thought we should go about doing this. Um, and 
I think that I, I'm sure that anyone can relate to this who's listening is when you've had a little bit of success in something, it's easier to get risky. Like, oh, I can try a different way, or I can feel a little like I can try something different, or oh, it worked. Like, I think all of us, when we're in our creative mindset, we're problem solving, we're like, oh, it worked. Wow, that that's a surprise. Um, and my background, I think that the part that influence influenced me like subconsciously was the experience that I've had and the training that I've had as a non-denominational reverend, because underneath mm. all of it, I said, it's bigger than your resume. It's bigger than your headshot. It's bigger than your reel. Someone has to believe in you. And that doesn't come just from stuff on paper. That comes from a, a vulnerability. It comes from understanding where you think you're headed. It comes from not being delusional. It comes from honesty about the business. And I said, if I can do this for people, sure, they're going to get a manager or agent. But what I was more excited about is they didn't freaking care if they got a manager or agent. Like they were so full of themselves. And I've said that before, like I want people to be so full of themselves that it doesn't matter. And yes, and of course I, I'm I like, wanted to talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like that is what I was about to say is that this was the crazy thing. And every time people have come up to me over the years and said, tell me about this program. And it sounds like a crazy thing to say is that the the program leads you to a point where you don't even care if you end up signing with someone because you know your worth and your value and and so well that and you know that you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. And that is such a big difference in the the mindset of an actor so much of the time is that we're always going like, I hope someone will sign me or work with me or I hope I get the audit. And this is like, who am I going to bring on my team yeah. to sell product me because product I am really exciting and people want what I have. Yeah. And I the mean, way you said so that. So that's the, yeah. that's the. The, the way you said that, I want to make sure everyone hears this because I think it's so important is like, when you don't care, it doesn't mean that you are suddenly like not smart anymore or that you're not wise about your own talent. It actually means that I think you've right. transcended your intelligence. Yes. Like you're bigger than your intelligence. You're so bigger than your intelligence that like, I am now here at a, ploy at a position of choice, which is why right. when people well, say they think get- Think of how yeah. actors, yeah, actors say all the time, somehow that, at that audition that I was so busy and I didn't really care, but it's the one that I booked. And so you end up going into this knowing what you want so much that, that you're not begging, like, it's not sexy to be begging someone to uh -huh. like you. So right. here you're saying, you know, this is what I've got. Are you, do you want to, do you want to yeah. play? And I get to decide if you're going to come and play in my, in my sandbox. Yes. And that the actor gets to be a choice. And the other part of the reason why that I made this is I was tired of seeing actors complain about this because to yeah. me, it couldn't be that all these talented actors that I knew that I was invested in as a coach and as a human being who I was friends with was like, there was no way that it made sense that somehow the business was like, yeah, no, you don't get to have this. That was not mm -hmm. a reality that I was willing to buy into. And of course mm -hmm. I was lucky because I'd already started to move away from, I'd already left, left acting at that point. They already left acting. So I was free enough to be like, I don't have to carry this on my own shoulders, but I just yeah. come from it. So I understood it deeply. And I think right. that part, you know, like I remember even when we were looking for representation for you, Sharon, it was like, well, how can this is, why has this been so hard? Like the pedigree yeah. that Sharon has and where she's worked and, and like, this doesn't make sense. Right. And I was like, and I'm I not going to settle for bad many math. ways. Yeah. 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 That was why. That was and the then, big reason why. And right. Mm -hmm. That was a big reason why. And one of the things so is, you know, we we're so excited. We're so excited. We're like talking on top of each other, right? Um, exactly. So forgive us. Forgive us, everyone. Um, but the other <laughs> thing that I did is I, I, at the very beginning, I was like, well, how am I going to make this? And what's up? I did this, all these interviews with actors to find out what would need to be in a program that would help you find managers and agents so that you would feel good and so that it would not leave you feeling crappy. Because the one thing right. that I kept seeing, and this was the part that would make me kind of bananas, is actors would work so hard to get the meetings. And then when they got the meetings, they were like, wait, now I have to go to meetings? Because it was so much uh -huh. work to just try to get in the room of a manager or agent in yeah. or a Zoom room or whatever. And so that there had to, I was like, you cannot have a process that gets you there that makes you feel like you just did a CrossFit class and you're exhausted. Like you need to end this process right. like very full of yourself because that's actually when the 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 stuff is on the line in some ways. Right. And so that was a huge part of it to me. And every actor to a person 
when I interviewed all, it was like 67 actors, I think that I talked to said, I can't stand the silence when I reach out. So I was like, oh, we need to figure out There's something how to, here. Yeah. Yeah. The silence cannot affect us so tough. So that was, that yes. also was like, and then I think I'm also a little bit of a bleeding heart for actors. Like I know what it is to put yourself out there and I know what mm -hmm. it is to not hear anything. And I know what it is to audition a hundred times before one job comes through and to feel the ups and the downs of the business. Like that part, I think it felt it personally incredibly gratifying to say, oh, wow, I am now surrounding myself with actors who have representation because all the people in my circle have, we've li have lifted them up or I've helped, right. to, they've lifted exactly. themselves up, but I've created a container where they could lift themselves up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it feels like there's some magical fairy dust in the air too, because the community, <sighs> like we're, you really, you enter this community and everyone's like, how are we all succeeding? How are we all rising together? It's a wild- <laughs> How is this actually I mean, happening? <laughs> right. Like how have I reached out to reps for so many years and done all this? And this time I'm getting this many meetings and this many yeses, and it's never happened before. And I, but because you transform and don't realize it. Yeah. So- and if anyone wants to hear the intricacies of Sharon's story, she's incredibly vulnerable and tells it all in episode number 10 of this podcast. And she got 30, 35, 36, 35, 35 meetings. Got it. Great. <laughs> nice and I want to also just before, wait, before we go there, because I know this is going to sound like we're just talking about how awesome the program is, but I'm really trying to dwell in what the program's effect has had on me. So it's a little me centering on my podcast. So that's what I'm doing today. I want to celebrate, right? That's what celebration feels like. So Ryan, again, he's, he's officially breaking character. For officially break, right? Yep. <laughs> officially celebrating, right? And I want to be careful because when you hear the number 35 meetings, you'd be like, oh, I need to get 35 meetings. The truth is you don't need to get 35 meetings to find your yeah. perfect re match, right? You, um, I will say most people do get in the double digits numbers of meetings inside the program, mm -hmm. but I just mm -hmm. really believe that the right people will show up when you reach out. And I think that's another gift that people like suddenly, I remember one of the, Stephanie Weeks who came through the program, she said, I just knew that the right person was going to be the one that I met with. And if I was in a match, I was okay yeah. with it. Like I could walk to the next one. And I just loved that, the attitude around it. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is, I already feel full, um, but there's so much more to talk about. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> I'm going to talk about me again for a second. So I remember okay. I attended um, the, the Make Agents Want You, like the introductory, here's, here's what this course is all about course, right? Yeah. On May 5th. 2020. And, and actually my parents who you've known for many years were sitting next to me. We all sat around the I table didn't know watching I, together. I know, I know. Um, and even, and they were like, is this, this Brian is on another level right now. And my parents have known you for a lot of years. Oh my so, God, that's so they sweet. were, I didn't were know just that. fascinated. Yeah. Um, so, so it started 2020. That was yeah. a, another lifetime basically like we were in the middle of a pandemic yeah and the business was so had giant question marks all over it no. and what a wild time to be like we're gonna all find representation <laughs> when we have no idea what's happening in the business um so so how like why then yeah. why uh how yeah yeah so Nath, I would everyone to think about March 2020, just for a second, as we say that, because we had uh -huh. no idea what was going to happen next, right? And there was a little bit of a moving train quality of like, I've already invited, like, if you remember the very first days of the pandemic, we didn't know, like, lockdown hadn't happened yet. We were like, maybe it's going to be for a minute, ba, 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 ba. so there was no, by the time confirmation emails had gone out and I'm going to be teaching this class, there was no way I was going to be like, mm, see it, people, I'm not teaching this. So I right. kind of shifted my expectations of like, okay, well, who knows? what enrollments will look like because I could see a lot of actors decide, well, the business is shutting down. So no one's going to be interested in me right now because the business is shut down. Like some version right. of that story being right. told. I said, well, I'm going to teach mm -hmm. the hell out of this. I'm going to give my best version of this class. We're going to see what happens. It, so I think something magical happened because I think a lot of actors go, oh, I'm going to be stuck at home. Maybe I'm okay taking a course because we had a yes. ton of enrollments right then, right in that moment. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I also think that you know, I think that the pandemic, I, I, you know, I was a different person during the pandemic. I think I had a really hard time during the pandemic. I didn't know it until now looking back on myself, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. 
almost removed from myself I was and that class and that community was my lifeline. And I have to imagine yeah, that it was me for the too. actors who were there too. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because it was taught, lo- I mean, we, was we had, we had homework. Moment. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Tell, tell me what you mean when you say that. Cause I think I would love to hear in your own words, like for you, what that meant. Yeah, it was the lifeline is such a perfect word because, you know, all of us who what we do is we collaborate, we get in and get messy when doing work and being with other people. And we were told you must go home and you must be alone. And, and then doing this program where we had to, um, where we looked at ourselves, we, we did it in community. We got vulnerable because that's, we love to get vulnerable. I mean, as artists, like that's where the magic happens. And it was, we were all, rooting for each other, so invested in each other because we have the time and the space to be rooted and invested, rooting and invested in this group of strangers who I feel very close to the people that I saw someone that in, that I was in this group with in 2020, I saw them at a live audition the other day and we embraced, we'd never met in person, but we just have like been in this together for so long, Lily Shaw. And, you know, it was like, right. So it was exactly what we needed. And I think there's something magical about the fact that the program grew out of that moment yeah. when people were so vulnerable and scared. And, and willing. Um, I would say willing is a huge piece of yeah, this because it was like really willing, willing to jump. In. And I will say, so you were there when I was like at night, like – does this worksheet make sense? And like, so, you know, Except, I didn't. Oh, yeah. and I was many times being like, I'm going to be the confused actor yeah. and, and go, well, explain this more. What does this mean? Yeah, yes, and, this, yes. and it was all about like making pretty slides. And yes. the sli- right. But, yeah, because yeah, so, and me, so I want to go back there. I'm going to go back there because one of the things I think because of what you just said, I felt an extreme amount of responsibility to make mm-hmm. sure that I was showing up at a certain level. So I think it was a gift to me to have that many people invested in this being their lifeline so that I yeah. was operating at a high frequency of like this, I need to deliver at the level to continue to be a lifeline. And I don't say that from a like uh, a martyrdom position, but like actually like it no. helped, it helped me stay up like, oh, I'm going to beat the frequency of the people who are coming to class every day and really deliver. And that one yeah. of the reasons I say that is because that's what led me to be like, Sharon, can you look at, so before I get into the worksheets, okay, wait, be clear. I spent <laughs> years developing this program. So it wasn't that I was like on the fly, hey, Sharon, what do you think of this random ass no, worksheet? Like no. I spent years and then it was now time to deliver. And so before I would deliver, like, does this order make sense to you? Does this, right? Exactly. And so we'd have these calls. It was like intricacies because you had so much knowledge and passion and excitement that I was, that I was like taking the tiny teeny tiny pointy tools and yeah. saying like, if you say this before that, then this has a bigger <laughs> impact, you know, totally. it was like, oh, that actually, here's another way to maybe present that, that point. And so we, I got to be the, the, the guinea pig and then be on the call and see how it affected people to be able yeah. to help have that conversation of like, okay, well, this is what people really connected to. So let's like get into the next part. Yeah. And it was so, and I have to thank you so much because that was so helpful to me. I couldn't have done that without you. I truly believe that because you're right. I was full of like, I have 6,000 things I can tell you about this. And so how do I whittle them into the most thoughtful way for you to be able to comprehend it, knowing that you need to not just have the know-how because a lot of the program is know-how. The other part is like, and also we're changing your mind and the way you see yourself in Mm -hmm. the business at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we can't just like, let's go guns blazing on the Indy 500 of how to do this because the shift wouldn't happen inside that actually attracts at the right level. And so that was such a Mm -hmm. good piece of like uh, fairy godmothering through to make sure like that I was getting in the order that would actually resonate. And it was very exciting for me to watch you because you were, you were just doing the thing that was so clear to you. So it felt very exciting to be like, wow, I'm watching something really exciting happening with my friend and watching you I be a, the coach that you were meant to be. Um, and I have a question. So are there in the course when people take it, are they listening or watching past calls that you did during the pandemic? Yeah. So there's a bit of a yeah. combination. So just to give a little bit of a tour. So their unit, when I'm, tr- when I'm doing the actual lessons are pre-recorded. me alone in my pajamas with my slides, I record, you don't get to see me, but it's uh-huh. me like th- those, those are, I, w- I have a very thoughtful 
way that I like to teach so that I can be spacious with the teaching. So those are pre-recorded. And then in yeah. the training, there are certain chunks from that 2020 edition that are like bonus recordings mm -hmm. because we had such a good, juicy mm -hmm. conversation about the thing because it was yes. the first time it had been taught. And so sometimes I find right. the... Of course, there's the live component of this course as well, for those of you listening. Yes, we have calls, course. coaching calls, but I just want to make sure everyone knows that these bonus, the reason why I think the bonus ones from that first time around were so juicy is because it was the first time taught. Mm -hmm. And so the questions were before Brian had heard those questions before. And so that right, way for the person right. who might bring a touch of confusion or might be like, I don't know if this applies to me yet. Yes. They really illuminate that. So they're 100, but they're, they're selected. Yeah. So it's not just like, here's all of 2020 and here's all of the, like, sure. so we still have a very graceful way of leading someone through the program. So they're not overwhelmed, but yeah. Right. Yeah. But it was such a vulnerable time in the world that I think it like those calls must give the current listeners such permission to be really vulnerable, which yeah. is what's really necessary totally. with this work. Totally. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So it's, you know, you are based in LA, obviously, okay. but now you have clients from around the world. Like you're basically a worldwide sensation. <laughs> um, one of my dearest friends is a worldwide sensation and I <laughs> feel very proud to say that. Um, so, so how did how did you create how did you create the program to be worldwide? You know, it was a surprise to me, right? So, it was a surprise to me that we were attracting clients, actors, students, whatever you want to call the wonderful community that collects around this program um, from other countries. And the first time, I think it was London was the first city that we tackled, I think. And I, and I think there was also an actress in Taiwan was at the very beginning. And I remember being like, hmm, will this work there? And like, I would ask the question with them as they asked the question. And yeah, what I, what I came down to again and again is, sure, will there be some idiomatic cultural differences in language? Certainly that could happen, right. especially if you're translating the work that we do into German, which are uh, Danish, which is, I think... Danish is a country and Denmark is a country and Danish is a language. Am I right? Denmark is a country. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Great. Those are both correct. Great. Great. Thank you. Welcome to Jeopardy. So um, when you're translating the work that we do into those languages, that might be some work that someone has to do. But what I kept coming back to is there ain't no world that exists that the spiritual truths that I believe in aren't going to work. Mm -hmm. And so- mm -hmm. That piece, which is hard for someone to believe, who is hearing me talk a bunch of LA, New York, Los Angeles, you know, Atlanta actors, right. is this really going to work for me? It's hard to make that jump. So I really credit the courage of those first time out of country people who said yes to this yeah. because they have to right. really believe right. that. Yeah. And the other part of it is, remember, this isn't just a woo woo, feel good about agents and suddenly you get one, right? There's a... No very clear, you're going to do this, and then you're going to take this step, and then you're going to take this step, and then you're going to take this step. And what I believe is because I give you such structure, you're free enough to say, I'm going to, I'm willing enough to let a new mindset come over me. I'm willing because I know yeah. where we're going. I don't have to plan out every single step because it's already been provided to me. It gives you the freedom, I think, to say yes to a new mindset. Um, and so the people from the other countries, uh, it's been really exciting to see it work every, I mean, I will say this today because that's what this podcast is about. It has, Agent Goals has worked in every single city, state, and country where it has been tried. Um, so I always that's say- incredible. I, right? I always and, say and like, it's so because, please, yeah. Go ahead. And it's, you're saying be, it's because it goes to like the humanness of these artists and the way in which they're communicating on an authentic human level is yeah. going to work everywhere like the, 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 the yeah. little details of how london works versus how toronto works versus how denmark works versus la might have subtle differences but the yeah. people are still people yes and what's wild about it is you know like well i'll it's interesting so a lot of my uh english actors i don't think anyone will be surprised by this will have a little bit of resistance because they're concerned about having good kind of good what i would describe as like good manners or culturally mm -hmm. not being too big in a room or making noise or i don't know dropping their teacup which is probably no. not the right way to describe or not, this. like bothering someone yes not bothering right, not someone bothering yeah. someone too yes. many times right? i need to follow the rules or whatever right and time and time again, it has worked in London doing it almost exactly how we do it in the U.S. Um, and, yes. and of course, it's thrilling to me, right? It's totally thrilling to me and thrilling to them. And I'm yeah. delighted and surprised. I'm not surprised anymore, but at the time I was surprised every time. Um, but we have to just imagine that if you really root yourself in, I am worthy in this business no matter where I am, 
it has nothing to do with my credits, my resume, my headshot, all those things. It's because I put in effort and because I believe this is my calling. And if I can articulate that in a way that doesn't sound like chat GPT wrote my email, everyone, I just want everyone to know I've, I, I, I had chat GPT write an, a, an actor email the other day. And I was like, this is exactly everything someone should never do. It was the perfect never do this email. <laughs> so just everyone. <laughs> right. The- so whatever you, you little, do, yes. don't let ChatGPT write your email. No, I literally, just in case there's a little window into that. When the email starts to say, I'm devoted to, no one cares if you're devoted. Everyone's devoted mm-hmm. or they would be like, it's like that kind of an email. Like, I'm a good right. work. No one cares if you're a good worker. I'm a hard worker. Yeah, yes. no one cares. I mean, you I care, be. we care, okay, but great. no one cares. Yeah. We care. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think that that was the, that's kind of the, the worldwide part of it has been pretty exciting. I keep on saying, please be the next person to get uh, an agent in Timbuktu or Tasmania or Tatooine. I would like to get to other planets. <laughs> Where is Tatooine? <laughs> Tatooine is in the Star Wars galaxy. <laughs> oh, oh, one of us is a nerd and the other one is I just like Star Wars. I just like Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel bad. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, okay. So so since it started in this whole other time in in our lives of the pandemic, you know, the the whatever times those yeah. were, the um and now we're not in that same existence. Has yeah. the program changed? Has it evolved? You know, I I thought about this question because we kind of talked about a little bit like what we we're gonna talk about today. And the it hasn't evolved that much. It hasn't needed to. So because the program is not taken in a vacuum, that's taken with live coaching and I see people every other week, that part evolves because I'm a different person than I was three years ago, right? And so what the collective mm-hmm. consciousness, what's going on in the business, the the looming writer's strike at the time we're recording it, you know, at the time mm-hmm. we're recording it mm-hmm. at this midnight, we'll know if there's a writer's strike, just so everybody knows, right? Yep. So, um, so that conversation changes because I'm with you along the way, but the, the, stra- the strategy inside of it hasn't changed that much. Now I might suddenly be like, you know what? I'm kind of on a kick to try this inside. So there'll be a certain like a uh, group of people inside the course who might experience me saying, let's try this right now. Cause I'm seeing this work. So I'm really the, I'm the part that has to stay nimble. Whereas the structure seems like it's, yeah. the structure can, can stay the same. Um, so I do think you also, feel like yeah. the market, oh yeah. Do you feel like the market's getting oversaturated with uh, agent goals, actors People. reaching out? Uh, in the very beginning of this course, I kind of worried about that. And I, I've realized yeah. now that I've gotten transcended that is that's an old thought. That's an old thought in yeah. the same way that I could think like the same way I could be an actor who thinks I have to book my next credit before I'll get an agent that there's some mm-hmm. version of if this looks too much like someone else's or they're all going to look the same or the formatting or BS like that. We have to remember, and you reminded me of this even, is that managers and agents are used to receiving emails from actors. So mm-hmm. managers and agents receive emails from actors looking for representation all the time. So right. what that means is there's a version, <laughs> I'm just saying like, Agent goals works, right? So the way that you're doing this particular email, which an agent or manager knows shows up to their inbox pretty often, like probably hundreds a day, I would just say, just so we're clear. Yes, right. Are cutting through the noise of the emails that might be getting out there. And that's what I see time and time again. The reason why I have this as fact for me is the right now, an actor who moves through agent goals let's use Los Angeles for an example, will almost always, Mm -hmm. you know, I can't make a, I cannot say that my program will hands down, get you an agent. I'd be a slime ball because you could also go take a poop on an email and send it to a manager and agent. I'd be like, well, that's not going to work. Right. So um, I don't know how you said poop through email, (laughs) but you get what I'm saying. So, um, or you could, or you could go real small when, when you suggest that people go real big, big, right. They get worried about doing it right. Yeah. Doing it so, right. yes. so what I was going to say is that they usually get in the double digits numbers of meetings. And I'm mm-hmm. hesitant to say that because I don't think you actually need to get double digits numbers of meetings to have a successful No, you really expansion. need to get one. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that right, that's feels great. that's right. the right match. Or, you know, I remember talking to someone who's who was like, I ended up not signing with anyone. And I realized it was it, so glad I didn't because I was not ready. And and like that's that's a big personal growth moment to to not get the sign assigned because you're like no no i had more personal work that i needed to do before i could like really expose myself in the business in that way so yeah I've, you're not the first person who shared I've, that you know Yvette, who is on the podcast right. talked about this she goes i had some great meetings she was episode number 64 if those of you want to go back 
And in the episode, she talked about like, nope, I was not, they were not for me. It was not my time for them. It was not my, I'm going to do this again. And she'd gotten a buttload of meetings and she said, not now, this is not my time. So, um, Mm -hmm. so the reason why I'm talking about the, the number of meetings is just the, the belief that I always use the story is you don't have to believe that agent goals will work. You just have to follow the steps. So I think Mm -hmm. about, I think about myself when I open a cookbook in my kitchen I never open the cookbook going, I wonder if this is really going to make a nice chicken thighs for dinner. Like I, mm-hmm. I trust that there's going to be chicken thighs for dinner at the end of Like I might overcook them. I get that. But like, if I put this much coriander and this much, you know, uh, salt and pepper, and I do it this way, like there's probably going to be chicken for dinner. Right? right. So the way I think about agent goals And you'll is- probably feel pretty proud of, you'll probably <laughs> feel pretty proud of yourself for doing all the steps and having chicken at the end. Yes. Right. So- Sometimes I say, listen, I don't always need you to believe this is going to work. I just need your willingness to do the work. So just take the next step. So I think it's natural Mm -hmm. for you to have days when you, I don't know, to have faith, for lack of a better word, to have faith. And there's some real, and like, you do have to do some work. I mean, there are spreadsheets, there are follow-up emails, there are doing some personal writing and there's doing the writings of, I mean, there's a lot of parts and pieces, but when you do all those parts, and that's what I was saying about the recipe too. When you actually complete all these things, I mean, you walk around feeling so good about yourself for doing all that work. Yeah. I mean, what I love is an actor. So a couple of times an actor will go through the program and they will have, uh, have gotten a lot of meetings on their first email. And yeah. enough where I'm like, you probably don't need to send any other follow-up emails. I feel like we have an abundance and we're going to do great. And they're like, but I really want to. And I always have to say, yeah. I understand. I just want to check in. Is it because you want a good grade in class? Is it because you want to be like, I really did this thing, this age of goals thing. So just yeah. to like check our motivation sometimes. I have an actress in New York. She's getting, she got like, she got some off the charts managers and agents interested in her. Like, Wow, yeah. wow, 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 famousy, famousy people kind of people, right? And one of them, I, oh, I freaking love this. She forwarded me the email that the manager said, this is the best pitch email I've ever received. And I said, if you gave me credit, I'll kick you because you better have said or you wrote the whole thing because of course I'd helped her work on it inside the program. Yeah. Said, of course yeah, I said yeah. I wrote it. I said, great. Um, and <laughs> the manager, the two, there's two managers she met with. Well, I think one was a manager with an agent. Um, super fancy. They were both like, they were both selling themselves to her in the meeting. It was not about her selling herself. It was about mm-hmm. let me just let me let me make sure that who you think I who who you who you are or who I think is who I think you are based on your email and what you presented. <clears throat> and that to me is the most exciting thing that you can go into a meeting where you know yeah. you are wanted is like that's that's why I started this thing right. That's the complete opposite of what we talked yes. about those actors being like. Where is the agent? Where is the love? Right, right? like and, where? Yeah, and that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why so many people get so many offers because really people are taking a meeting with you at this point because they really know who you are. Yeah. Like this is not my friend's fancy pants so-and-so got me this meeting and then their manager's like, okay, great. N- nice to meet you. And then doesn't Nothing ever happens. You. Yeah. These people are taking are re- requesting meetings with you because they pretty much already know that they want to work with you. It's a wild sensation. Okay, so speaking about lots of students having this amazing experience of of being wanted when, you know, they're getting meetings, um you've obviously received a lot of feedback from a lot of students because you've had so many students that have had success. And your producer, I don't know if you know, but your producer sent a couple of them over to me so that I can read them and I'm going to do some cold readings and we're going to hear about, here's some of the feedback. Okay, here's an email that was sent over and it says, I wanted to send a quick message to say a big thank you from the bottom of my heart. So far, I've had seven requests for meetings, took three meetings, had three offers, and I'm proud to say that I've signed with an incredible agent that I'm so excited to work with. I've been in this industry for close to two decades, and I've never gotten such lovely responses, even the no's. And when I went into my meetings, I felt desirable instead of desperate from the first time in my life. 
as an actor. This course was amazing. You guys are amazing. And I am forever grateful for the transformative experience I had. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I had no idea that this letter said all of these things because I'm reading it cold and it's exactly everything that we've been talking about. Totally. Yeah. And I'm thinking about this actress particularly because she's overseas and then had moved back to the States and so had taken mm -hmm. a huge break from the business um, mm -hmm. and was worried. Like nothing on my resume mm -hmm. is recognizable to you. And, um, and, you know, I always think there's those last, you know, opening night jitters or last minute jitters. And the same thing comes mm -hmm. from sending out your messages into the world. Like all of a sudden I can see an actor like, right before the very clicking send, like a little bit tight at the very end. Right. And I could see her yeah. decide she wasn't going to do that. And it was so mm -hmm. beautiful. And this is her, I mean, this is the kind of reaction I want her to have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to bang through some more because there's so many. So Andrew wrote, thanks so much. I had I have three meetings and I haven't even sent email number two yet. Um, Francis said, Brian, I just wanted to let you know that I signed with a manager who I truly believe I attracted into my life thanks to your program. The 20 questions, the acting story, the email, the openness, all of it helped me to find this new partnership that is blowing me away. I've never felt so comfortable and seen by a rep in my life. It feels incredible. I just wanted you to know how much I appreciate what you did for me and what you're doing for others as well. I'm feeling emotional reading these. Okay, so Hannah said, um, I wanted to send over a personal thank you to you both for all of your hard work on this course and being a guiding force these past few months for me. I received more meetings than I ever thought possible, but beyond that, I have never felt so empowered and in control of my career. I said no to people. Ooh, that feels so good. Um, I want to have, uh, okay, so I said no to people I would have been desperate to say yes to a year ago. Interesting. Um, I have more trust in my gut instincts than ever before, and I have a way better idea of how to be a great client going into these new relationships. You have given me the greatest gift beyond new representation. The tools in the course can be transferred into my own career and into my own life so seamlessly. The accountability this group provides through the calls, the Facebook group, and your support team really separate this course from others and has given me more accountability tools in my own life. Just wanted to make sure you know what a positive impact you had on me. I am forever grateful. Oh, so good because it, it's so true that it it's not only your acting career, but it changes you as a person. Um, and I feel like we're so woo-woo, but it's not just me saying this. Okay, so now we know Hannah and Andrew and all these people. And now Eric said, I took every single meeting. All of them were professional, positive, busy, and already interested. Hello. The meeting was a formality to make sure that I wasn't weird. That's so funny. I also learned how to pitch myself. I'm so, it's so much easier than I thought. OMG, I could go on over the moon. Thank you, Agent Goals. Oh my God. And I know there's like 50 more of each of these. <laughs> um, so what is your reaction to all of the amazingness that I just read? Is it, is it like commonplace that it, uh, that it means nothing at this point or, or how do you feel? I wasn't, I mean, I knew something like this was going to happen during this interview. I didn't know this is what it was going to be. And I didn't know how I was going to feel. So I'll, a lot of yeah. things going on. So first things first, it is commonplace. I get an email or a DM every single day or two or three from actors who are getting a buttload of meetings wow. are in the middle of their meetings and are being signed. I say that, yes, on this podcast episode to toot my own freaking horn. I'm going to just go for it. I'm going to say that I'm really Do proud it. of that. Yeah. And yeah. it uh, hearing them all in a row like that really did bring up some emotion for me. There's mm -hmm. also, I'm realizing as I say this, there's like a stance that I have to take or that I have been taking for the past three years now that is, you know, I believe agents and managers are extremely important in an actor's career and vital and they do a lot of hard work and I love them. And I think that, you know, we have to remember that an agent or manager hears no a thousand times more than an actor does every single day. So there's mm, a lot we have wow. to remember about the strength in that. Wow. Did you just hear that yeah, for the first time? My brain just... Uh -huh. I think my, like a little bit of my brain just poured out of my ear. I was like, whoa, right. So we have to remember okay. that, that they hear no a lot. We think we give them all the power. They have all the power for the yes and the, but they're going to yeah. cast just hearing no all the time for their clients. Yes. And so I have a great respect for them. And part of my stance has to also be that if the relationship is not right, it's okay to walk away from it. That if the mm -hmm. relationship is not right, it's okay to say yes to somebody else. Uh, 
I don't want to say it's detached because I think you can have a beautiful, deep relationship with someone in the business in terms of a manager or agent that really has long longevity, right? So when I hear these pieces, it's a little bit like, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to connect the dots here, but what what I hear inside of it is, and like there's inside of it, I have this, I have this tiny little fuck yeah, like fuck yeah, you found your right person. I'm so proud of you. I'm so mm-hmm. delighted for you. I'm so excited for you. And this, I think there's this little tiny worry in the background that's like, make sure you remember what you did in agent goals and don't forget who you are because you're amazing and incredible. Yes. And just because that you chose your person and you've decided to be together doesn't mean that you disappear, right? So I think I still have my like controlling Papa Bear concern, even in that right. moment of the truth of who you are doesn't change now that you have the agent. It gets bigger now that you have the agent. So um, I am so pumped for every single student who has that experience. And you know, I really do believe you had this experience because you took all your meetings that I think it's so cool when you take all your meetings because you don't get to sit across from somebody on that side of the table very often, who's the agent manager, who's submitting people all the time. And just, even if you don't agree with what they're saying, you at least mm-hmm. get to like hear their perspective. And my goal is that by the time you're getting into meetings, you have a like semi-permeable membrane that you have control over when someone says something about your career that you're going to decide if you're going to let that in or not. Whereas the old, you might be mm-hmm. like, anything a manager agent says to me is the truth and they are the arpingers of truth right. and anything, yeah, right? So like we can kind of narrow, like cut that reactionary piece of it out instead gather the information that does help you. So I think, yes. you know, that's, I guess, to sum it all up, when I hear those things, um, it makes me, uh, the analogy that I can come up with, it's not a great one, is, uh, okay, you got to do it tomorrow, Brian. Tomorrow's, you got to do it again. Like you you got to get up tomorrow and do it again for somebody else. It's not done. For the it's next person. For the that, next person. Yeah. It, it is. It is. It, it is. It. I will yeah. say that each of those messages I receive is a reassurance to my soul mm-hmm. that I'm doing the right thing and that it is making a difference in get up tomorrow, do it again. Like that. That's what mm-hmm. I say it does. Because being, man, being an actor is hard. Yeah. It's really hard. So to have, have a moment in your life where you, and, and, and like the relationship with your rep is is special because this person is saying, I'm going to champion you for no money until there's money. And we're going to go on this long relationship ride together in your career. And so to, to be the Yenta essentially of, of like connecting people to the person that's saying like, I'm going to root for you and do everything I can for your success. Like it's, it's such a special connection. And, and I really also want to say that, like, you, you made a point that it doesn't have to be your forever person. If most people date, if we're going to use that analogy, like yeah. you, we've, you've dated more than one person in your life, even though you, it was the right person for that moment in, in time. Yeah. So I, I know people have done like an agent goals 2.0 in their, in their experience after they left someone that wasn't the right fit ultimately, or I I mean, the first manager that I worked with ultimately changed paths to focus on producing. Yeah, And so I did another round and I have to say the team that I ended up with the second time that I did it is like even sexier. And my first manager was really sexy and my current, because I was even more like, all right, folks, I got a lot to <laughs> offer. Yes. And every single person that I know that has done it for a second time for uh because they ended up leaving or something changed that they had an even better experience the next time because you just are committing again to being like I am going to share my worth. Yeah. And it just gets deeper into you. Yeah, and I just want to make sure everyone hears cuz like doing it a second time I want to make really clear is usually because you've outgrown the person that you signed with, or like Sharon yeah. just said, you, the person you signed with the first time she, she decided to become a producer and we can't control that. Right. So if you remember everybody right. we're reaching out to, and I think this is actually the gift of, you need to remember this in the business. Like people say this to you all the time, but remember a manager agent is a human being just like you, which means they can change their mind any day. Yeah. So yeah. I want to be a dentist. I want to move back to Minnesota. I want to like, they're allowed right. to do that. I'm going to so, switch yeah. offices myself. Right. Yeah. A lot of people 
move where they are. And I yeah. want to go be in development like, now. Like I have a passion mm-hmm. for that, right? And so what we have to remember is once you learn agent goals, I like to think of it as like it's a faucet. You're like, okay, let me go back to the faucet and dust it off and turn it on and get my meetings again. And so mm-hmm. where people I see use it again and again is where they are getting reps across the country, right? They use it. I'm in LA. Yeah. I want my rep in LA. Now I want rep in New York. Now I want to get one in Vancouver. And so right. that is why, you know, it's never my wish that someone, when someone goes through it twice, I, I it's usually because they've said, I was with them for a while. And then I figured out like, I'm bigger than this lady or like, exactly. They, or yeah. now I'm ready for, now I'm ready for more teammates. Like yeah. I got a manager that time and now it's now time for an agent, agent. Yeah. or like it's, yeah. Yeah. It's nothing is, it's just like your resume. It's never complete. Yeah. Like there's, Wait, which is, can feel a little happening. crappy. So I want everyone to hear like, and you might also find oh. the rep that is yours for years. I want to make sure you hear for the idea. Totally. <laughs> yes. So most people do, but I want to make sure you also hear it. Cause why I like to talk about this share in particular, and I'm glad you brought it up is when you make the investment, the investment is in the, the hardware of this, the, the, the understanding mm-hmm. of this, that you can use it mm-hmm. again and that we give you all the databases that are always there for you and all that. So the lifetime mm-hmm. ability to use it, I think is part of the magic of, of it being to get, pay you back again and again is my hope. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, one cool story that I'd love to share is that oh, I have a please. client who used this exact process to pitch to sponsors when she was going to the Olympics, cause she's a, what is it called? When you skateboard on snow? Snowboarder. Uh, <laughs> when you're... Oh my god! Yes, I was like, she's well, a, I don't know what. what? She's an Olympic That's, snowboarder. She's a snowbo- yes, wow, and she cool. used the same process to reach out to sponsors for when she was going because every single Olympian does not get a bunch of sponsors knocking on their door unless they're super famous. In case you right. didn't know, but she used the same way of pitching herself, and I just think that's such a good skill to remember. Yes, I'll get a manager agent, and I will know how to hella pitch myself for whatever yes. after I've gone through this. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And that's, that was also with taking all of the meetings, even if on paper you thought, oh, this is maybe not my person. You just get to, I was like, oh, now I know how to really hit the humor and that part of my life story. And I really know how to express the roles that I'm most interested in and, and know what I'm looking for when I'm talking to people like this person asked me a question that no one else did. Um, so let's talk more. Can we talk more about success stories besides sure. me? Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, sure. Tell me some about your favorite success stories and why. Okay. I have a couple. Uh, I'm going to start with Selena. So Selena, she's episode 59 of the podcast. You're going to go listen to this. But Selena had, and she'll say this in the podcast, and I gasped during the podcast, and I still gasp when I think about it. She said she probably had spent $10,000 on showcases and trying to meet with agents and managers in seven years. Mm -hmm. And- Mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit. I remember when I did showcases in New York City all the time. And it would be like, stay in yeah. touch with those eight yeah. people for forever and you'll never get a meeting and who cares. And what. This is not to say that every right. showcase doesn't work. I want to be mindful of saying that, but it was just very cl- And so she got herself a manager in Los Angeles. She lives in Chicago. The manager's interested in getting mm-hmm. her reps in the Southeast. Can't wait for her to come to LA. Like she got herself a perfect match, invested in her, doesn't care where yes. she is in the country, cannot wait. That to me was like, the the release from that old way of having to go about it to me was such an exciting right. journey for her, right? Uh, she'll share with that if you th- that's episode fifty nine if you listen to her, um, and then you know I love a skeptic, I love a skeptic, mm-hmm. and I right. can say uh, episode number eight Sheila June came through this program and she was just real skeptical and not wishes, wishing she wasn't skeptical though. Like I'm in here, I'm in here, I'm doing this. And then the skepticism voice would come in. I yeah, really just that applaud- voice was so loud. Yes. yes. Yeah. I think skepticism is important because I think as an actor, you need to be skeptical of stuff, right? You should be skeptical of my track record. Listen to a bunch of podcast episodes, make sure you like the way mm-hmm. I talk. Right. So because mm-hmm. skepticism is one of the ways we stay smart. It's one of the ways we protect our money. It's one of the ways we learn. Yeah. I learned through skepticism something. Let me see if I really trust this theory till I try it in practice. It's the reason why my spiritual practice is called A Course in Miracles because the training is a practical, it literally says this in The Course in Miracles. This is a practical course, meaning it must have real life application or it means nothing yes. to you. So I am very much a skeptic, right. right? So I just love that her journey came from skepticism. And then she accidentally, ended up with bi-coastal representation through the process, right? And <laughs> just, I just happens. It's like I just like the willing skeptic is like a great process. That's episode number uh, eight. So really early, right before, a couple before yours. And then one of our most popular episodes of the podcast is number 55 and it's with Sarah Utterback. And Sarah Utterback 
was on Grey's Anatomy for quite a while. So you might think someone who has a resume like that is like, they're set. They're going to get out there. They're going to get their reps right away. They've got the great mindset on. They're just going to turn a key and like, nope. Sarah mm-hmm. brought her healthy skepticism to this. Also, I think Sarah brought this beautiful degree of like pissed off to the program mm-hmm. where she's like, I shouldn't have to do this. And yes. I just, I, and I, I receive that energy so willingly because that's why I created this program. You're right. You shouldn't have to do mm-hmm. anything. It should be, so, it sh- this should be, it sh- everyone should get reps easily. Right. So that's why I developed this. I was like, please bring that to this. But she said, I just decided I was going to follow the steps. I'm just going to follow the steps. And what I love about her story mm-hmm. is at the end, for those of you who read Gay Hendricks or you under the, a big leap or the big leap, I think is the, the, his name of his book. Yep. There's like an upper limit situation where when she got, she got a, but she got 36 meetings, I think or three, even more than that, I think. And she had mm-hmm. to, and she, when she was ready to make her choice and I want to make sure everybody doesn't get intimidated by the number of meetings again, but when she got to make her choice, she was like, Oh shit, I'm going to have to pick someone. And when I pick them, I'm going to have to show up as the actor worthy of that agency now. And yes. that was a whole different, like, Oh, Whoa, I have, I, I used to be the person like, why do I have to do this? And now that it's here in front of me, am I ready right. to do this? Right. And so I think it's such yeah. an, Im- I loved that journey. And I think that also can speak to the person who's <clears throat> got a lot of credits or been in the business for a while. Who's like, yeah, but I need to be able to move up a level in my representation. This course meets you where you are. And I'm really 100%. proud of that because I could totally be, yeah. I could have worried over the actor who is advance I put in quotes in their career and be like, this won't work for me because right. ba, 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 ba. and time and time again, we see that it works for them. You can listen to the episode number mm-hmm. 55. You could listen to uh, the episode with Laura Nimi on the Laura podcast. Nimi. Who you, yep. Laura Nimi, yep, yep. great. Yep. Um, so those ones really stick out to me because they hit those themes that I hear people come up against. Are there certain aspects of you teaching make agents want you or agent goals that you enjoy the most and why? There's two parts. You know, I am a man of words. I love words. I love to. I love messing around with copywriting. I love editing mm-hmm. people's emails. At the very end of this process, everyone, I edit every single person's email. No email has been sent without my eyes on it. And I That's love that wild. moment, right? And I love that moment because I get to be alone with you. I put in quotes in that time because I'm looking at that email. I might sleep on it. I come back to it. And I really begin to, I think what happens is when the actor receives that email back from me, they can see the story of who they are even more clearly because they've worked it out. They've worked it out. They've worked it out. They've gotten it on paper. And then suddenly I put this little, little fairy, just a tiny bit of fairy dust on it to just get it clearer. And they go, Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's who I am. And it, it reads, and I don't think this is, it reads a little bit like if the New York times wrote your incredible obituary, right? Not exactly, but like, that's a little bit of what it does. Um, your career, oh, right. Yeah. Your career obituary. No, 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 not your, your career. The opposite. <laughs> no, no, your, your opposite. celebration of life. Okay. Um, yes. And uh, right. And in pe- I see how people change because they, I will get messages. Oh my gosh, they change them to my email. The, this email, I can't believe this email. Like they, and it's not because it's selling you. It's because the truth of who you are is being sold. And that mm-hmm. is what's unique to it. It's not trying to puff you up or sound bigger than you are or inauthentic. It's the truth of what you are. Just like said it with all the juicy truth that's in there instead of allowing a manager agent to read between the lines. And so I love that moment. And then yeah. the other one is probably the most obvious. And you could have guessed it if I gave you some more time is I love the coach calls. I love yeah, being there. Of course. With, you know, we call everybody in this com- community, the corn dogs. I love being there with my corn dogs and working mm-hmm. through it. And I love it because I, you know, we're on Zoom. I see everybody's faces and the one person's asking the question and five other people are smiling because they're like, oh, yes, I needed to understand that as well. Right. And right. so I just see light bulbs popping off the whole time we're in one of those calls. Um, and one of the things I like about those calls is remember, if it was your second call, it might be somebody else's seventh call. And there's mm. kind of a a gift that is given because you get to and your second call, you don't need to know every step, ba, 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 10, 10, 10 steps away. But because the person from the future is asking that question, you get to like borrow coaching from the future and be like, oh, great. When I need the answer, mm-hmm. I already have it. So I see people really accelerate in their understanding. Yeah. And that to me is, is a real delight because what happens that means is you don't have to wait till you're done with this program to feel the way that I w- that I hope that you can feel about your body and your about your yeah. body of life, your body of career, that you're inside of your body inside of this business. So it can happen really mm-hmm. quickly. So to me, that's those are my two favorite parts. 
Yeah. And yeah. I mean, that's so special that you spend time with every single email. It just, you as the coach become so deeply invested and connected in every single person. I mean, that's yeah. a lot of, that's hundreds and hundreds of people that you know intimately. Now. Yeah, it's really thrilling. I'll tell you, well, you know what pisses me yeah. off? Here, I'll tell you, this is what pisses me off about the program. When people what? send yeah, out their emails and they don't tell me, like, how did it go? And did you sign? Like, because I'll get an email like a year later. Brian, I forgot to tell you, I've been working with this manager for a year. And I'm like, right. I wanted to know that in here. Like, so those, because it means so much. Like I said, it gets me up every day, right? So yeah. that is the one, that's the one thing that is pissing me off, right? Because like, I'm like, His pet peeve we worked on this. If you don't yes. tell them that you won. Yes. Right. Yes. Like, how'd that email go? I worked on it too, right? I'm so invested, right? Yeah. Uh, so what do you feel like you personally as an individual, as a as a professional, what have you learned from your students uh, after doing this so many times in aging goals? The biggest thing that I've learned is you cannot fight with spiritual truth. You cannot fight with the truth of humanity. And mm -hmm. your your obstacle is usually the solution, or we like to say the problem is the solution, right? So the thing that, right. so anyone who's listening right now, if you've decided I'm too old, I took a break from acting, I don't have enough credits, I don't have a reel, whatever that thing is, or there's not enough on my resume to show how much I've invested in my career, or it's too old, or it's too long ago, that thing that you believe is holding you back most often is the thing that will crack open the right rep. And it is wild to people and it feels radical. But if you can imagine, mm -hmm. let's just pick the picture. Let's I'm going to pick the choice of the, the actor who believes they're too old to work anymore. We're not going to get a lot of attention, yeah. right? Yeah. And I get that story. And I get that it's not always reflected on television. And I want to make sure you hear me say that I'm not trying to gaslight you into seeing something else on TV. But what I find is those actors, when they reach out and say, it's been a minute since you've heard from me, or uh, let me give you a little window into what my career used to look like they get mm -hmm. phenomenal response from managers and agents. And when they weren't getting responses and why they've probably buried their heads sometimes or held back is because they've been reaching out in the old way of trying to cover it up or look busy mm -hmm. or not share the history of where they've been. Because the truth is right. I would never want the actor of a certain age to end up with a manager or agent who doesn't respect their body of work. Mm -hmm. And so and what I want experience. is I want, yeah, I want, I want, I want the agent who's not going to respect that to give the dignity of a no, to say no to you mm -hmm. and let the one who does respect it rise up and choose you. And I think that that's the big learning that I had here. If I'm going to say a little bit more is it's called make agents want you for a reason. Right. Let that, like, instead of you going out and saying, here are the four agents that should work with me and that is to give them the dignity and the experience of being able to choose you. And I yeah. think we want to take that away from them because we want to engineer small risk. We want to protect our vulnerability. We don't want to allow mm -hmm. someone to say, I want you and someone else to say, no, I don't want you. When actually, please let the people who say no, say no. We need to get them off the right. list. We can move on. By, yes, move we can on. move on. And we can, yes. and, and, and everyone listening, if I can have a wish for you is, who you are right now today as an actor is enough to attract the right agent that you are ready for in this moment. I'll say that and again. You know, I've heard who you say, yeah, yeah, oh, say yeah. it again. Yeah. Who you are right you now with the credits you have, the non-referral, the real, the not real, whatever you have going on in your career now is exactly right to attract in the right agent that is right for you right now. Yeah. Go ahead. What do you say? So you mentioned about like that they were covering up and I, as, as someone who is not just out of college or, you know, a, a perky teenager felt like I had to show in when I was reaching out in the past, like I know everything and I've done everything and I'm doing everything and I'm so busy. And then you said, but then agents and managers don't know where they can fit in and be of service to you. Yeah. And yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's huge. Like huge. The, the, the permission to say, um, you know, this is, there's space for you because I've done this, but this is the rest of the circle that I like. What a gift for someone who has been doing it for a long time. And what a gift for someone who's just starting to say there's space for you. I mean, to learn to actually not show that you're perfect and busy and know everything is like, was mind blowing for someone and like he, me. And I will say, and I say it is the number one thing that, you know, when I interviewed agents and managers before creating it, 
the number one turnoff that they said is an actor who doesn't know where they stand in the business. So when mm -hmm. you reach out to a manager or agent and you say, my career is fabulous. Do you want to get on board this train? Because it's going great. It's going real fast. You want right. to jump on this momentum? Yeah. And I'm going to be like, the agent's like, actually, looks like you're doing great. I'm good. Like, right. well, there's no, yeah. there's nothing for me to do. Like, based on your resume and what you're saying, you're probably doing just as good as I could do for you right now, right? You want to be able to make, here's the gap for you so you could step right into this role. You got to make yeah. space for that. And thing, that, let's be honest, that's vulnerable. The thing we think we need to yeah. cover up. Yeah. yeah. The thing yeah, yeah. we've thought we needed to cover up for so long is the thing that, right, makes someone say, I'm going to step forward. Totally. It's like in a yeah. good performance, the vulnerability, the messiness, the authenticity, when you're not pushing pushing out and you're just being present that's what makes people s sit forward and that is yeah. what how how you're pushing us to present ourselves in the world and it's big yeah it's really big i mean it, it's i see it on people i see it on people and i see them go into the, like it, it and this is the thing that i think i'll leave you with is like imagine going into a meeting where the other person in the room knows their assignment it's not a room where you're going mm -hmm. in. They're saying, prove that you belong in this room with me. The person no. in the room, or if it's a Zoom room or phone call, whatever it is, is saying, so I looked at your resume. It looks like what's next for you is we probably need to get, like, I'd love to get you some co-stars or recurring has got to be next. That's got to be what's next for you yeah. because I can see you've yeah. already done all this, you know, whatever. We might need to do this and this or you, you Broadway, you've done enough understudying. We're done. It's time, right? Like whatever the thing yeah. is that is that, that they can see it. And the reason why they can see it is because you gave them a map. Right. The way that you reached right. out and gave them a map. An and it's not just in map. one, e an honest map, not a, I should be doing this cause like, it's very clear. Like, this is where I need your help. Um, and mm -hmm. that is freaking, that's the kind of meeting you want. Because then also remember, if you're gonna have to make a decision, you want to hear the person say that they understand what their job is. Cause that's how you'll make a decision. Yep. And that's like, yes. yeah. So, you know, 8,000 actors later, you know, 742 actors having signed with representation, it is, uh, you know, this, I feel like I'm a member of a really cool club. Like I'm a, a club of the actors mm -hmm. who have representation. We have different conversations now. Like obviously in my program, yeah. I'm helping the actors, but like now we get to be this conversation. Like, Hey, what do you want to make? Or what are you doing next? Or like, do you want to create something? Do, how's it going with your agent? Like the conversation gets to become around how are you showing up in the relationship instead of, are you even getting to have and, the relationship? And, and now you get to be an artist. Now you get yeah. to be an artist, this thing that you've been hustling so hard because now that this part is there's a structure to, to walk across this path. Now you get to be like, what am I going to create with this yeah. team of people behind me? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Sharon, for thank coming on. Thank you for giving so many actors. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm going to speak on behalf of all actors. Thank you so much for giving all of us actors such a, such a gift because I feel like, you know, I'd been searching for a long time and no one else was doing it in this way no one else has ever done it in this way that I, that has been presented to me and it's so many people are grateful that they've experienced and so many people will be grateful when they do experience in the future thank you so much you know it feels a little i feel weirdly like uh perverse hearing you say that at the same time that i'm, I'm going to share this on my own podcast but again i want to come back to what i said at the beginning which is I don't believe you can build on success you don't acknowledge. And a great coach of mine named yeah. Dallas Travers taught me that. Um, and I think, you know, this is a successful part that I'm love, I love to do. And I love to watch actors succeed in this way. So thank you so much for giving the space to do this. And thank you everyone for listening today. I want to just reference before we bail on this, if you this excites you, my uh, makeagentswantyou.com is the free training that started it all that over 8,000 actors have attended. So whether or not now mm -hmm. was the time for you to have representation, I encourage you to attend because it does shift things in your brain about where you show in the business, whether or not you need reps right now. And that also applies to actors who are with reps you're not sure about. It also gives you a space to yeah. do with those feelings. So I really encourage you to listen there. And you know, we referenced a few of those episodes about the actors in Denmark and Vancouver and London. So I just wanted to give the numbers to those episodes. So if you were excited about, you know, learning about the actors in other countries. Uh, the London episode is episode is number 119. The Denmark episode is number 78. And the Vancouver episode is number 109. We'll be releasing more of those as we have more actors who are, I just had my Australian actor have a great success with this. She had a 97% open rate. I'm pretty proud of Australia. Um, so, wow. uh, so thank you everyone for uh, being along this journey with me. And thank you, huge thank you to Sharon for coming on and uh, being my host today on the podcast. I'm so grateful to you. 
I love getting to celebrate you, Brian. (laughs) 